Hey guys, it's Dr. Dan Lieberman, and I'm coming to you live. Just for a little brief moment, I wanted to answer a question, and frankly, it's the end of the day, and I'm just too tired of typing, so I thought it might be easier just to give it to you guys live. It's a great question, and it came through the YouTube comments, and the question is, I have L5-S1 spondylolisthesis with stenosis, I've been recommended laminectomy by some doctors and laminectomy with fusion by other doctors. What's the right answer? And this is a great question because this is an area in which the right answer is rapidly changing. Let me just give you my two cents on it. And let's start out before we dig into the answer with a little better understanding of the question. Stenosis means narrowing. I think most people who watch this channel know that. Narrowing happens in the case of a condition called spondylolisthesis for a really specific and good reason. And we can see it if we just look at our friend Shorty, the spine model. So look at Shorty. If you look at her from the side, the vertebrae, the spinal bones, one, two, three, four, five. You notice that the bottom of one bone lines up with the top of the next one. There is a slight curve, but it's not much. And that's also true at the back, right? The back of the bottom, the back of a bone at the bottom lines up with the top at the next. Well, what would happen if the bones, instead of lining up, if they shifted? Well, what would happen on the inside where the spinal nerve root is, if you look at the spinal canal, if the bones shifted, the canal would do this. It would get kinked off, right? And that's in fact what happens. The shifting of the bones is called spondylo bone listhesis movement, bone movement. And the narrowing that happens as a result is called stenosis. So it's got this horrific and hard to say name, which is spondylolisthesis with stenosis. It's a surgical condition. Spinal surgery has long been shown to be extremely effective in the treatment of this disorder. What's controversial is which surgery you should let them do on you. And here's your choices. It's not chocolate and vanilla. It's laminectomy, which is opening up the spinal canal, by drilling off the lamina bone or laminectomy infusion, which is taking off the bone, going through that space, taking out the disc, spreading the vertebrae apart, putting in screws here and here and connecting the screws with a rod. Now, obviously nobody would have a fusion unless it would benefit them. And it's a much bigger operation to have a fusion. I will tell you my own experience on this is that throughout most of my career, the standard of care was to do a laminectomy and fusion for spondylolisthesis with stenosis. It's graded based on the severity, grade one, two, three, and four. Grade three and four, you need hardware for sure. But grade one and grade two, at the beginning of my career, the standard treatment was to do a fusion. What I noticed was as time was going by, the less I did, the better my patients did. So I started putting hardware on one side to cut, to slow down the need for hardware on both sides. That was half the operative morbidity for them. They did just as well. And then two papers came out and the papers were randomized controlled trials with small numbers of patients and they showed that there was equivalent results whether you did the fusion or not. A lot of doctors went, meh. They, you know, the, doc, we're conservative. They've been doing it for a long time. They, they meh. They said, I don't care. I'm going to wait for more data. And I have to admit, uh, having been a doctor for since 1991, so 30 year, 30 plus years, that the early results are sometimes wrong. In this case, I would say that the, um, the spinal laminectomy alone for grade one or grade two spondylolisthesis with stenosis is a very reasonable approach. If you feel strongly about it, 
then, and you want to have the least invasive surgery possible, that's the answer for you. If you're a one and doneer if your attitude is, I'm going to have one surgery and I'm not going to have surgery again, I'm going to get this done once and be done, then you want to have the fusion and you want to have a minimally invasive fusion. So as usual, everyone's different. There's no one answer for everyone, but I think that's the right answer to this question. I hope that helps. If you'd like to go over it in your particular case, feel free to click through the channel to the website come on the show and we can go over your films and talk about what would be best for you. But that's that's uh, my answer for you today. Have a good one. It was very nice to see you all. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys live on Friday.